James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. All right. All righty then. <laughs> oh. It happens to be the end of August uh, 2015 and then the unofficial ending of summer because Labor Day weekend, I, I believe, is what? Next weekend? I don't know. What is it, on the 7th or something? Labor Day oh weekend with all the festivals, like the big Italian festival we have in our town here. To get, oh, they my got, goodness. My, 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 uh, what happened? my calendar is X'd out almost. Well, that we means... Got two more stinking days. You have two more stinking days until September, yeah. September the foist. Oh, God. That's Brooklyn talk. The first. Oh, Lord. Formalities. hi -o. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, also formerly known as, but you can, you can also call us Progressive Discussions, because that is, most of our pages are Progressive Discussions. Uh, we're coming to you live from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeast New Jersey. My name is James <clears throat> P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And um, this is the time of year I used to hate as a, as a child because my summer vacation was over. And school, which meant work, school began. It was so depressing. Anyway, that voice you hear in the background is the one and only, the one and only, my co-host for many years and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, how are you feeling this ending of summer, sir? Um, I mean, how are you feeling this week? Besides that, excellent. All right. Now, the um, it appears to me that the uh, 2016 Republican Republican clown a bus is uh, uh, gradually converting grinding to a halt. No, no, it uh -huh. is. Well, yes, yes, it's uh -huh. grinding to a halt and becoming the 2016 Republican uh, 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 clown circus. It is turning from the bus to a circus because uh, I don't know how true this is, but uh, there seems to be a sort of Vulcan mind meld between Donald Trump and Sarah Palin. They've been meeting. Is that true? Uh, I have heard nothing on it. I saw the post last or night satire, on Facebook. Or is it satire? Uh, so until I find out more information, I don't believe it. Sarah Palin supposedly was uh, interviewing Donald Trump uh, last night or whatever. Let me tell you something. If Donald Trump... Donald Trump selects her, it won't be You'll because... Never because she'll be a running mate to him it'll be because she uh, will um, be like a gopher a secretary I mean a secretary uh, uh, she'll be good at making she probably doesn't know how to make co I know she drinks a lot of cocktails I don't think she can make any she's not a mixologist so she can dress a moose she can dress a moose field. in the field shoot a wolf from a helicopter Oh. Real tough, real yeah. tough. In other words, Hunt, when where, where the where the uh, victim has no chance whatsoever. Of course, right. that's all. Dick Cheney did it, didn't he? When he shot his friend in the face. You know what I heard? I heard uh, these uh, macho pussies, which is oxymoron, right? Yeah. Macho pussies uh, actually uh, have gone grizzly bear hunting, waiting outside the den when the grizzly bear comes out of hibernation. But guess what? 
many grizzly bear, they don't go into hibernation. You know what they learn? They learn to follow the wolf pack and they learn to right. steal. They must they must have turned Republican these grizzly bears. They they <laughs> They, they, they learn how to steal the kill of the wolf pack, and the uh, wolf pack can't do shit against a grizzly. I mean, they could try, but I yeah. don't know how they would fare in real cold weather without well, hibernating. Well, see, that's what's happening. The, the, there are still animal out there, like caribou, I guess. You know, there's got there's, there's still animal out animals out there in herds that migrate looking for. Food, mm -hmm. you know, vegetation, and the wolf pack. From what I understand, they don't hibernate. They're in business all year round, and sure. some of the grizzlies decided, eh, instead of hibernating. Strange. Let's just let me just follow the wolf pack and steal their prey. Sounds Republican to me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, that will be. Fortunately, animals are not political. You yeah, know, neither is God. You know. Uh, uh, well, look, even if it's not satire, you know, uh, Donald Trump doing things with Sarah Palin or, t or taking on Sarah and, and her slut daughter Bristol at the same time. hi -oh. You know, it'll be anything that's detrimental to, the, to any Republican gives me a lot of pleasure. And, and it will help out. I'm not even going to mention the the chick that's running against Bernie Sanders as a, as a Democrat. Uh, she's a corporatist. She's a democrat. Who's that? The Gorgon herself, Hillary Clinton. Oh, I'm not even going to mention what she's helped. She's not running against Bernie. No, no, she's well. She's, Bernie's not running against her yet. Yet, yeah. it hasn't gotten to that point yeah. yet, but. Anything that helps the progressive side of the fence is all right by me. So well, that's let's, only Bernie. But he's, he's the, the only, only one you can call a progressive. He's the only true a liberal, right. or a socialist. He's the only true progressive. Yeah. Okay. Formalities. I want to say greetings to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. Um. A gentleman by the name of David contacted me uh, from Bergen County, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and um, he um, he had a um, an older uh, Elantra. Who, was, who, make, who makes that? The General Motors, I think. No, Elantra you, is uh, old, old, old. Uh, Hyundai. No, no, I'm sorry, a lot, Alara, Alara. I think it, it, it's a not either, an Acura. No, no, it's American. It's either a Buick or an Oldsmobile. Oh. Anyway, there are Oldsmobiles anymore. Well, when when he got it, oh, okay. there were. Oh, well then I. But it, know. it's not old, like a jalopy. It uh -huh. is actually a nice, smooth riding car. It has the uh, orthopedic style, you know, velour seats. It has the uh, climate control, a good stereo. It, 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 um, it has a good six-cylinder engine, mm -hmm. you know, uh, which uh, on the highway can give you great mileage because you, you hardly have to touch the accelerator. Anyway, he had some issues with the car uh, going dead. And uh, ah. he, th he thought it was, uh, I said to him, you think it's an alternator, David? Sounds like an alternator. So anyway, he has it towed to a uh, uh, local gas station, uh, uh, the Getty uh, Service Center, Getty Gas Station on the corner of Williams Avenue and uh, Terrace Avenue in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. And, uh, and the guy seemed very nice. Uh -huh. Okay. He has the car there a couple of days, the guy calls him, because it's near where he lives. The guy calls him. And he says to him, um, "Oh, I, uh, 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 your car will be ready uh, by the end of the week. I see what the problem is." All right, he waits, he waits, he waits. Guy calls him back, says, "I have bad news for you. You need a rebuilt engine." Now, 
the way the car went dead, it sounded like it was an alternator or something like that. It didn't sound like the engine because yeah. how, how could it go from fast, accelerating, and smooth to you need a rebuilt engine? Aren't, aren't um, problems, mechanical problems cumulative and they gradually creep up on you? Yeah, but an engine don't shut down by itself like that. Like, you know, like in other words, when you have a problem, it doesn't go from being great to being dead, totally. Like, you, you, yeah. there are some um, red flags that go up. Ah, that's right. right. Some symptoms right. develop. Okay, now, long story short, he gets the car back, he guy soaks him for fucking 1500 bucks ah. for this older car. He says, what am I going to do? I can't afford a newer car, and uh, you know when you're stuck between the rock and the hard place? Yeah, they wanted two thousand dollars for me to give me the, en the, the engine. engine. Yeah. Okay, he gets the car with the rebuilt engine, car rides like shit. Like shit, he tells me. He says, now when he, every time he shifts gears with his automatic transmission, he hears a bang. And, and, and it, it's like the car jolts or something. Um, and the temperature gauge is, is, seems to be stuck on hot. But he's ha he has plenty of fluid in the car. And there's no leak. You know, like water pump or antifreeze leaking. There's nothing. And, all right. And, and all of a sudden his air conditioner is blowing warm air. So his air conditioner went from ice cold to blowing warm air. The transmission went from perfect to crap. Yeah. The car runs like shit, and he has a rebuilt engine. The guy, the guy's not returning his calls. His calls. <laughs> so this week's inductee, of course, into the Chiseler's Hall of Shame, is this son of a bitch, piece of shit, scumbag, low, low, dirty, low down scoundrel auto mechanic from the Getty service station that I mentioned before, the corner of Williams Avenue and Terrace in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. You're a piece of shit, you're scum. It's very, uh, uh, Reverend Bill, it is very difficult, very, very difficult to find an honest mm -hmm. mechanic these days. Mm -hmm. Very difficult because it sounds like this guy did a little sabatucci sounds to me like he was using the car while it was at his shop. Well, yeah, but, yeah, but... how do those things, how does the transmission go bad and stuff like that whilst the car is in the shop getting a rebuilt engine? It's not going anywhere. It's not and, doing anything. And all of a sudden, he needs the Freon. Uh, you know, or, or the compressor, or whatever the hell. Now his air conditioner's not working. And well, it's, you don't need no Freon unless there's a leak. But he that's had. A, but it was damn. ice cold when he. But it was running cold when he brought it in. I know. That's what I'm saying. But they. they this is a scam when they say, "Oh, well, you need some Freon." If there's no leak, you don't need no Freon, because you ain't losing any. Yeah. It's, it's so could, it's something it's else. Compressor could be compressor. Could be anything. But the point know, but is, not the Freon. Things don't go from good to worse while the car is sitting while the car is sitting at the mechanics bingo so what I'm what I'm wondering is uh, well if you want to analyze it like Sherlock Holmes deductive reasoning yes, whatever, my dear Watson you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure this out uh -huh. it, it sounds like it's sabotage and it really is despicable that there are many of these individuals that can look themselves in a mirror and well, do what they do. I used to take my car you know, really. to the Goodyear place down a, on uh, River Road in Hackensack. Right. And uh, one time I took it down there and I put it in the bay. And the mechanic comes out and he tells me I got a hole in my gas tank. So you wanted to drive the car into a bay. Yeah, but the point is, he put the hole there. 
with a screwdriver. Oh, fucker. You know John at Amico on Route 46? The we Greek, the Greek the guy? My sister stopped going to him because he charged her for a brand new alternator and all he did was a spray paint a rebuilt alternator silver to make it look pretty. So, you know. And, and oh, this, remember the Sears Auto Center in Hackensack? They yes. got shut down by the state of New Jersey because they were ripping people off fraud left and right. Well, so was the good year up on Route 17. They had uh, Channel 7 there one time. You know, doing a, the, yeah. a, 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 a report on, on, on a, yeah. the corruption that was going was that on. Was that Arnold so. Diaz? You know Arnold Diaz? I don't know who the hell it was. Whoever it was, it, it was the consumer yeah. uh, uh, person who does consumer issues on, on, the, yeah. sta on the station. Uh, listen, everything we talk about politically is part of our series Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Capitalism in a Conch Shell. And there's the conch giving me messages from the great beyond. And um, where is this guy? To all you uh, fools, all you idiots out there, and believe me, they slither into our Facebook group, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. All the teabaggers that are brain cell deficient, that actually believe in trickle down economics, <laughs> the big lie, the big fantasy. What you have is siphon up to the 20%, to the top 20%. The corporate oligarchy siphon up economics. It doesn't trickle down. It was a lie. But people are still believing that same tired old. Ronald Reagan story. Well, you know, it's hard to figure out, but what they're really believing is they have the they have learned over the years for some reason <coughs> right. that they protect the billionaires and the millionaires. Right. Now it's unfathomable why they do it. But the poor slobs down in, you know, Wolf County in Kentucky, this is what they do. They protect the billionaires, the millionaires, the oligarchs, who have not their interest in mind no. at all. Well, no poor person or middle class, well, except for upper middle class, but no, no person in mainstream who votes Republican is ever voting for their best interests of ever course. these people keep on shooting themselves in the foot of course in these impoverished uh so-called and uh, you can't figure red out why states. you can't fi why why would they care if you're going to tax the billionaires that's true but what has it got to do with them yeah you know what it could be but they protect it could be they are so bewitched and spellbound by the by their cult that their pastor is spewing it is you know the cults this it's something unfathomable like that I don't want to say Christian cult but it, it is it's a it, yeah it's a it's a it's counter their, it's their idea of Christian it's a counterfeit Christian cult right. like this one woman she must she on the group last night she must be from a red state She's trying. She says, "Oh, you don't want to go there and open up a, a can of worms can of with worm, with with yeah. a, um, a pro-choice uh, comments like you know the fertilizer." I says, "This is exactly the kind of group that you can open up a can of worms about because a fertilized egg and an embryo is not a proven scientific, scientifically proven human baby, any more than a fertilized chicken egg is a chicken." And she hasn't replied yet. I says, and then I mentioned the Bible. Um, uh, only about Adam. The, about yeah. Adam. Adam taking the first breath is the well, only. He didn't take the, it. He was given. It. He was given yeah. the first breath. God breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. Yeah, that's the only time the Bible actually states when life begins. Exactly. But. I have a, there's a couple other uh, holy roller teabaggers on my friends list and they're always posting. Life these, begins at conception. N not only that, they have all these, these um, 
uh, holy roller bumper stickers on their car. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, you know, like like you like you know, you can just have conversations with God anytime you want. I'm that, sorry. That kind of, like Tim D. Tebow used to pray uh, uh, yeah. that he win the football game. It's all a show. It's arrogance. It's arrogance. It's it's a show. This doesn't happen because God does not hear all prayers. Not only that, all you're supposed to pray in private, the closet. That's correct. That's why I say it's all show. Not public. The Pharisees and the Sudukis used to do that. They like to pray outside to be seen of men. You see. I like that banner. So they can get the best seats in the synagogue. I like that, that I like that banner about the mega churches where it says Yes, that's where true. in the Bible does it say that you must give donations so your pastor can have a private jet? Exactly. Exactly. Or, or a mansion like Joel Olstein exactly. and his wife. Etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That's the counterfeit Christian crap that goes on today. And yep. with their counterfeit Christian traditions crap and then they carry around that book that book that, the Bible but they don't believe it while the money is just flowing into their pockets yeah they take the word they perverse and distort the, the, the meaning of a tithe now planting the seed a tithe. I don't know how true it is I mean I've seen him say it that mr. Trump has said that his favorite book is the Bible Hold on, hold on. Where, where are the levity bells? However, now he looks like a jack o' lan a jack off a lantern with that orange hey, face. Uh, he had the woman pull his hair the other day. It's real. Oh it's no! Not a toupee. No, he did that on a talk show. It's real. Okay. As stupid as it may look, it's real. Mm -hmm. But he looks like a jack when he has that phony smirk on his face. He looks like a jack-o'-lantern. Yeah. I wish he really stays in it long enough um, to allow the Trump wig to be the hottest thing for Halloween. Oh, he will be. He, oh he's going to be there. Come Without on. a doubt. You got, what, is it uh, 14 months till the election? And it, I mean, all of this is going on now, you know, but it's over a year. Hey, what about these, what about these young chicky poos? that are swooning over Donald Trump holding up signs that they, in support of Donald Trump. Do, don't they realize, these, these college girls, don't they realize that he, mm -hmm. it, that Republicans are anti-women's rights? Obviously not. They must be looking at the fact that he's a multi-billionaire. Nah, has to be. I, I, I don't even think... Yeah, thank the funny. Lord! The one, one is holding up a sign. Thank the Lord there for our go. future president, Donald Trump. There you go. That's that's the crap, which is unfathomable. You don't, you can't understand why these people have such a emotion to such a fake religion. Because he entertains them very well. Well, it has nothing to do with him. It has to do with uh, you know uh, Joe Osteen and Pop Off and all the other. They all get involved with these people. Hey, I heard all the white supremacists are taking. Uh, 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 That's what uh, they say. Are really taken to Donald Trump. They're they're they like they like him. Well, just because of the my the immigrant thing. That's all. Yeah, the immigrants. Yeah, because uh, those people down, you know, those people down in uh, the uh, the poor counties and etc. in the states, they. They think the immigrants are taking their jobs and taking the um, uh, welfare and and and, and 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 planned parenthood stuff. They're taking their money. You know, it ain't happening like that. Now, well, as long as you, as I don't care. I mean, Trumpy wants to deport 11 million people. Take them back to Mexico, and then if they're decent people, they can have a way of coming back. Well, I got I got news for them. I can have those eleven people deported tomorrow. All you have to do 
is have the corporations check who they're employing and all the illegal immigrants ship them out isn't that on a job application are you a US citizen are you exactly are you and if they lie and obviously they lied to get the job or the corporations don't care of course Look because that. they want the cheap labor so that's how to get rid of them. They're, they, they're part of the problem. Exactly. They are the problem. You know, and uh, 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 Jeff, and then the H-1Bs, because, you know, the people come in on a visa and then they overstay on the visa. And they well, don't these go companies back. specifically import H-1Bs. Exactly. And they sponsor them. And now Donald Trump is uh, being technical. Uh, hollering at um, Jeb Bush for saying uh, a fence. We have to put up a fence Instead of a, at the a border. Wall. No, it's a wall. It's yeah. not a fence. Well, you know what? Whether it be a fence or a wall, these uh, people in Mexico, they know how to tunnel. And they, they've been doing it for quite some time. So. Yeah, well, they won't be able to because of x-ray equipment and all that other stuff. But yeah. the... I don't know how long the uh, wall is right now, whether it's a thousand miles or whatever, but I believe there's two thousand miles to be covered. Now, the Great Wall of China yeah. took five hundred years to build. Well, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I don't want to get into the ancients. Uh, I'm sure Donald Trump can build a wall, you know, yeah. for another thousand miles, but, uh, you know, wouldn't it be easier, uh, no, that would be job creating, to hire some more border patrol. I got a better to idea. To line the border. I got a better idea for lining the border. But there's even better. You take, you take, the, you take the, those servicemen and women out of Afghanistan and, and, and Iraq and all those bases around the world where they have no business being and you put you line the border with them yeah or there's even a better way Mexico has to start redistributing their income instead of to all the 35 families who own it all Listen. so that there are jobs so the people will stay but there. That is an issue, not just with Mexico. That is a typical third world yeah. Latin American problem. I mean, plantation economy. Colombia, yeah. the South America does it. I mean, there's yeah. a, lots of corrupt. You know, uh, they all. Uh, well, except for the um, who's that? Uh, countries like was it? Uruguay, the president of Uruguay, Honduras, Uruguay, and, uh, Bolivia, Paraguay, Bolivia, very progress. They have very progressive El President. Yeah, I guess they get shot down like you go. No, he's still, they're still alive. Uh, not for long. The United States will see that they don't get, uh, you know, to do what they want yeah. to do because that's that's socialism and communism. Well, Bolivia kicked out. Um, um, what is the U.S. Secret Service or something has to do with... Um, well, as well they should. Uh, and, and Monsanto, they're all kicking Monsanto. Yeah. Excuse me, they're all kicking Monsanto out. Getting back to the zealot, right-wing, counterfeit Christian cultist evangelicals. I just want to... I'm starting to feel the energy that they feel. I'm starting to I'm starting to feel it, man. I, I dig it. I, it's pulsating through my veins. Let's, it's time for me to start taking up serpents. Ah, I'm taking up serpents. I'm a pastor. I'm an evangelical pastor. Ah, I'm taking up serpents. No, no, no. Ah, ah. Oh, I got bit. Oh, yes. Ed, but, let me call 9911. No, no, no. What? What? My faith will, will will neutralize the poison. All right, we'll wait five minutes. The, the faith will neutralize the poison. No need for 911. No need for paramedics. I know, God will the serpent you. your has faith. no power. Your faith, your faith. Over yeah. my faith of my my wonderful... 
unproven Christian cult. I'm taking up serpents. I'm taking up serpents. I see that tongue coming out of that serpent. Look at that tongue. Ooh. I'm taking them up, brother. Yakety yak, gods are talking back. Oh, that was from uh, when Steve Martin played a TV evangelist. He said that. Yakety yak, gods are talking Ooh. back. Taking up serpents. Oh, I gotta put him back in his uh, in his bag. Yeah. Hold on, I got it over here. There he goes. Oh, get back in there. Drawstring. <laughs> Jeepers. Jeepers. Oh. Oh. Well, you must have had good faith because you're still living. Oh. Hey, you know what? The poison, the venom. I shouldn't say poison. Poison is ingested. Venom is injected. Injected. <laughs> the venom did not take effect. So I'm you know sure. That, uh, I'm sure that evangelical holy roller faith neutralized the venom. It. You had it. Dude. You know that old crap of that. Even the you... skeleton is happy. Look, he's dancing. He's dancing the dance of joy. Da, 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 da. Right, I'm you sorry. know the old crap about when you get uh, 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 bitten by the snake. Yeah. And you're supposed to. Uh, Cut the X's into the the place and, and suck, suck out. Suck it the, up. Yeah. And then the other that guy. That was gets, a lie. It doesn't work. Doesn't work. No Why, sir. The circulation just. It's, it's it, well the circulation still goes, but you are ingesting you know whatever into your mouth. Uh, trans. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, Transgenders? No. Not transgender. <laughs> Tran um. Not transdermal. Uh, 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 sublingually. In other words, whatever, the, yeah, yeah, like like when you put a homeopathic tablet under your tongue, the venom is entering your bloodstream via the mucous membranes of your mouth. Well, it, didn't, it just didn't work. Okay. So, so all you people with your uh, what is it, Cub Scout and Boy Scout books, Training, yeah. that tell you, well, the tourniquet. I mean, that part is probably wise. Tying something around. The arm yeah, but you better <clears throat> you better be able to get to some place that can uh, nullify that poison or something because eventually it's going to circulate and you're going to be dead. Even if you cut, even with a turn, even if you whatever, even you know? if you cut it, I think there's a device where you don't have to use your mouth. It's a but, suck thing. But yeah. there's got to be some venom that stays in That's correct. the blood stream and circulates. That's correct. Let us sink our teeth into these readings. That is correct. The readings have yeah. officially begun with the seven bells. Seven bells? Is wow. that anything like the seven fishes? Seven is a lucky number. Alright, let's start with uh, Mr. Trump. Might as well. Mr. Trump. I got a dandy uh, caricature uh, to put it as the front cover of this show. Now, what, do you, what is your opinion of what, what the, my good friend and administrator, Mr. Sash uh, Boyle, told me about uh, breaking up the show into parts because people have a short attention span? Uh, didn't we do we that? We through that, yeah. Didn't we do that a couple times? Uh, now, my question would have been, hey, Sash, do you watch the show to the end? Well, uh, pausing the show, if the show is an hour and a half, and you pause it, and you come back tomorrow, where you left off, isn't that kind of the same, same as thing. listening to part one, part two, part three, yeah. part four, part five? Yeah, but I that's, mean, uh, my question is, yeah. uh, is the person it? telling you that actually doing that, watching the whole show? Or, it, yes, and it, well... Or if it was in in five parts or four parts, uh, what's to stop them from not watching all four parts? Exactly. They could not watch exactly. all four parts. So what is wrong with two hours? A guy can't watch two hours if that's what he wants. No one's forcing him to sit in front. How of long the is Jimmy Kimmel on at night? Hour and a half, two hours. Well, all of them are. All, all of them. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, but they're. But they have Hollywood uh, celebrities on, or oh, they they do stand-up comedy. Yeah, oh, but when it comes true. to learning something, people are they don't stick it out. Now anybody could could listen to part one, 
and maybe half a part two and not even finish the other parts. That's correct. So uh, as far as the human race having a short attention span, no. uh, that depends on their interest. If Bernie Sanders put out a two hour documentary, I would sure be glued to the computer yeah, it's, it's, watching it's, it's it. It's a matter of your, your it's a matter of your taste, you know. I mean I mean I understand what he means about people having a short attention span. Yeah, but we're not we're not putting do? down what Sash said. But you the know. point is here here, I'll give you a point. People have a short attention span. But when they go to uh, Texas Hold'em poker, they'll sit there for two or three hours without a short attention span. So you know, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a uh, half a dozen of one and uh, you know six of the other, whatever. Yeah. If you're gonna watch the show, you're gonna watch the show. If you're not gonna watch the show, you're not gonna watch. Or it. or 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 they'll they'll also sit through a two-hour movie that got high ratings. But what I would have told right. Mr. Sashi, and what I would tell all the group members, is that. You know, to get a real hold on this stuff that we're doing here in etc. You should be reading the newsletter. That's right. And 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 if it if the issues hit home, if they apply to you, you should care a lot about sitting it out and watching an entire progressive show or reading the newsletter. Subscribing to it first, of course. Or any material out there, whether it be by Bernie Sanders or, you know, uh, 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 Robert Reich or a a any good progressive worth their, their salt, you know, you should make it your business to research, to study, to update yourself, and most importantly, everyone should vote. Doesn't matter if you're, if you're brainless or you're you're a walking demon. I don't care if you're the worst person in the world. I don't care if you're the greatest sweetheart in the world. Everyone should vote <clears throat> because uh, I, um, the average person who struggles every day mostly votes Democrat, you know, pr predominantly, uh, uh, unless there's a good independent liberal candidate. They they don't vote Republican, so. Every that's why Republicans can't win. Every poor every, every poor slob working stiff that does not vote that is an automatic vote for a Republican. Yeah, remember that. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead. you needn't worry that Donald Trump or anybody else for that matter will be able to abolish the Fourteenth Amendment to the Constitution. That would require a two-thirds majority in both the House and the Senate, followed by ratification by three-quarters of the states. At the same time, I think it is long past the time to care about a thoughtful discussion of a complicated issue. News media who yell, CLOWN, at Donald Trump, or any other Republican perceived to be the front-runner show that they themselves care little for thoughtful discussion. Well, they're, they're, they, may, they may seem like clowns to many, but they also know what they're doing. They have a, a wicked, evil agenda. They know what they're doing. They, they, uh, they're just such a bla blathering out words, n nonsense, uh, uh, because they're, um, they're paid off and they, they can't really reveal what they want, you know, because they, they're, they're puppets of the, of the one percent. So they're just, you know, killing time, uh, shooting their mouth off and sounding like idiots. Across the United States, it is clear that people have lost their trust in politicians. Watching the recent Republican debate, 
With few exceptions, the candidates seem to be reading from the same playbook. Democratic candidates will likely do the same. Donald Trump doesn't seem to care what people think. He speaks his mind. And although some of what he says can't be taken seriously, he is different. Oh yeah, that uh, um, uh, I was speaking to a, a, a local man yesterday that uh, is supporting Donald Trump because he he's very outspoken. He speaks his mind, and and he cannot be bought. But that's the only reason he's basing his support on. He's not talking about. He's not focusing on the content of what this man is, says, what, what comes out of his mouth. Or whether he will be a decent president. No, he's not even focusing on that. Yeah. Entertainment that these people care about. He is different from the rest. And as the anti-politician, it makes him attractive to many voters. Bernie Sanders has spent many years in Congress as both a member of the House and the Senate. Although mostly voting with the Democrats by labeling himself a Democratic Socialist, Sanders is considered an outsider. Like Trump, he has always spoken his mind, regardless of what others may think. He doesn't allow himself to be bought. To many, this is refreshing. Whether Trump or Sanders can endure through the primaries and national election remains to be seen. I heard that Bernie Sanders, that the people of Texas that love him, they ha they're moving him to a, a much larger venue, just like they do wherever Bernie Sanders goes, but this is Texas, mind you that he's going to a bigger venue. I think the other day he had a gigantic venue and Hillary was at Chipotle dishing out. Oh, you mean to look like Ooh. she's like a regular person? Oh, of course, come on. Oh, look at Hillary. She's, I feel your she, pain. She's holding a, a cafeteria tray, sliding yeah. it yeah. at Chipotle. Oh, she's a regular Chicky poo. She she's one of us. Yeah. I wonder if she'll go out and feed the homeless sometimes. Instead too. of feeding her face. You know. No, well she'll she'll do that for the uh, for a photo op. You yeah, know, that's uh, what I'm talking about. You know, like when they go to soup kitchen on Thanksgiving and they and they scoop out. Of, you Look want a, you want a little uh, uh, mashed potato, sweet potato. You want a little you want a little stuff in cranberry here. Sauce? Is it cranberry sauce. You yeah. want it. And turkey? a little turkey, turkey, and then they they do that, and then they, they probably do it for five minutes, and they're out, and they're gone. As soon as the camera said, "We yeah, got it, we got you enough." See George W. Bush, he's he's uh, he's uh, he's down in Katrina territory now. He's he's uh, hugging up to people and etc. He's the one who allowed all the damage to occur. Yeah, didn't the coax like make money off that the victims or some way? Who the hell knows? They, you know, article. these guys make money all the time. Yeah, he, what do you say? <laughs> Remember me? I, I was around when you... I flew over in the airplane. I wouldn't come down here. I mean, you heard what my mother said, that these people in the, in the stadium there, or whatever the hell it is, Super the Dome. Superdome. It's a step it's upward. It's a step up for these people. Yeah. To sleep on the on the uh, football field of the yeah. New, or New Orleans Superdome. It's yeah. a step up for them. Yeah. Let them eat cake. There you go. Regardless uh, of what you think of them, oh gosh, I think they both bring a refreshing change to the monotones we hear from their rivals. Perhaps others will get the message and voice what they feel is right for the nation and not what they are told will poll well. Yeah, people should really, um, they, they should really come to terms with the fact that all this entertainment is meaningless in the whole scheme of things. It's, it's what is your leader doing for you? 
uh -huh. is has your life improved uh -huh. any way, shape, or Mr. form? Mr. Reagan asked that question from the, the previous year. Are you better off today than you were four years ago under Carter? He asked that question, and people sort of uh, glommed onto it. You know? well, Jimmy Carter is, 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 ba is basically a very good person. He's a very yes, a good person, but he had bad advice because deregulation was crazy under Mr. Carter. Oh, he deregulated? Yes, he deregulated. Well, they're making him out to be a saint. Jeez. And then Reagan carried it on. Actually, that, that made, that actually made Dwight Eisenhower more progressive than some of these Democrats that we know. Uh, obviously. Today. But back then, there was there was not a right wing that uh, pulled the strings in the party. You had a 91. There were, there were left wings in the party, there were right wings in the party, there were centers in the party. Yeah, you had a 91 percent. Both parties. You had a 91 percent uh, tax rate on the rich under Eisenhower, yeah. which probably contributed to the prosperity of the 1950s. I'm not sure if it was 91, it might have been 70, I don't know. But, but it was a hell of a lot a more than now. Yeah. No, I post. Well, Trumpy wants to uh, get more from the rich. I taxes. Po yeah, what one percent more? I don't know. I, I posted a banner he on. Hasn't uh, put it out yet. On Eisenhower, he uh, compared to Republicans today, he was pretty progressive. Yeah, Eisenhower. And of course, my friend, I have a friend that uh, Ben Carson. Uh, the people for Ben Carson uh, are talking like the Republican Party is the same as it was when Abraham Lincoln was alive. Hey, pal, it changed during the years. Americans are really that brain dead. I mean, they really. They're stupid, some of them. You know? Goes without saying. I mean,. It's all common sense. You just open your ears and your eyes and it's all around you. The proof is all around you. How could you... Yeah, but there are people who don't know history. In fact, you can, go, you can graduate from colleges without having taken a history course. Now, if you don't know about history, you're, you're, you're doomed to repeat it. Then you, then you believe the crap uh, from, the, from the U.S. media. You know, it's like I say about those movies, those uh, what I call the uh, classical movies like uh, Fire, Fahrenheit 451 yeah. and Brave New World and uh, the day they were still. If you know those things, you have a better grasp of things in the world. And it's the same thing with history. If you know, if you know that the Republican Party was against uh, slavery when it began under Lincoln and et cetera, et cetera, uh, 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 and then it changed and the Democrats were once Dixiecrats and they were for Jim Crow laws and all this stuff and then they changed. If you know that, it's not the same. Not so much. whatever Ben Carson and his supporters or whatever are talking about Republican, that's old shit. Doesn't exist anymore. My 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 history books in school mention none, none of all the negativities of uh, U.S. history. It, 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 none of it was of in course. the books. Everybody was a hero mm -hmm. in the in the in the history books when I grew up. Yeah, everybody that was white. Oh yeah, they're all white. Yeah. They're all white. No, I mean Native Americans were were demonized. Uh -huh. Savages. Savages, savages, yeah. Uh, um, the founding. Uh, everybody in the U.S. history books in school was white, and they could do no wrong. They did. And they were blessed by God to do that. Right. Much like the ancient Israel, you know, in Canaan. And any time the Canaan. United States was attacked by Native Americans, it was always the fault of, you know, the Native Americans. The poor victims were attacked. The poor white pioneers, and so on and so on. They didn't even mention about. It. They mentioned the gold rush, but they didn't mention that people were shooting each other in the back <laughs> and stealing their claims. And 
you know, all this uh, violence and greed mm -hmm. went on and corruption well, from day one. Yeah. They didn't mention the founding fathers having slaves. They were just the great, the great founding fathers. America is a great country. And the first thing I ever saw was exceptional a, was a drawing of a young George Washington telling his, saying to his father, I cannot tell a lie, I chopped uh -huh. down the cherry tree. And nothing about Did he pick up the cherries and make a cherry pie at no. least? Nothing about the slave trade, exploitation, yeah, nothing yeah, about yeah. the genocide of Native yeah, Americans. Yeah. Nothing about oh the colonists. They made it sound like the European colonists were doing everybody a favor by colonizing everything. Well, they the say world. that about capitalism, don't they? It's the only economic system that has raised people's incomes in the wild. The history books in school, since I was, since I started kindergarten and up until now, are nothing but a part of a great brainwashing scheme to brainwash children into becoming uh, uh, drones and suckers. Believers of crap. Lemmings as adults. Believers of crap. Some spiders in our yard stretch a strand of web over a distance of 15 feet. Um, my yeah. wife says... Oh, yeah, definitely. My wife says... Orb weavers, they call them, I think. They either shoot it out like Spider-Man or somehow fly it across. You know, um, spider web webbing is actually a very, very strong material. Uh, um, like the, like the silkworm, but I think stronger. I think it's stronger. Yeah. I think they attach the silk to one side, drop to the ground, walk to the other side, climb and attach it there. Who's right? And fly it across. They might fly it across. They might fly it across. But you know what? People don't realize this, that when when uh, sunrise comes, guess what? The spider yeah. consumes its entire web and recycles it for the, the night for, yeah. for the next evening, for the following evening. <laughs> Boy, he's a hard worker. He don't he waste makes. anything. Them hey, bees the are ants, hard worker and bees. Bees. You know how many workers. you know how many trips the the worker bees have to make for your freaking jar of honey? You, you you're fake honey. No, well, we're, oil we're not talking today. about the the scam, ah. the the fake honey that the uh, the FDA, USDA, whatever allows them to sell, and call them honey. We're talking about real wildflower, raw, organic honey. Bees work extremely hard just for that one jar of honey you have. Mm -hmm. You know, and plus they're endangered. You're both wrong. Oh, they don't fly the web across. They don't shoot it out like Spider-Man. A spider typically spins a strand, casts it to the wind, and hopes for the best. You're kidding me. If so, things don't work out, the spider may simply snack on the failed strand and try, try again. So the so they it's like shooting crap. So they just they throw it. And, it, and if the wind blows it across, it, it, becomes, it, part, yeah. it becomes part of the web. Yeah. How about that? I just learned something new. A Madagascar creepy crawly called Darwin's bark spider <laughs> would be the envy of your backyard spiders. Its webs often bridge rivers. Wow. We're almost done. We're almost done. Holy mackerel. Oh, that's it. We well, better, that's for that. We better I, break for. I got a small thing here uh, to go. Yeah, but she's eyeball. Well, ah, screw it. You know what? You got a small thing. We got five minutes here. That's all right, it. all right. Bang it out. She'll have to wait. Buzz Aldrin is teaming up with the Florida Institute of Technology to develop a master plan for colonizing Mars within 25 years. Oh, they want to. They want to corrupt and pollute Mars now. The second man to walk on the moon took part in a signing ceremony on Thursday at the university 
less than an hour's drive from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Yeah. The Buzz Aldrin Space Institute is set to open this fall. The 85-year-old Aldrin, who followed Neil Armstrong onto the moon's surface on July 20, 1969, will serve as a research professor of aeronautics as well as a senior faculty advisor for the Institute. He said he hopes that his master plan is accepted by NASA and the country with international input. NASA is working on the spacecraft and the rockets to get astronauts to Mars by the mid-2030s. Instead of pissing away trillions on the military, I, I would rather see them piss it away on NASA. Aldrin is pushing for a Mars settlement by around 2039. Yeah, well he won't be around. The 70th anniversary of his own Apollo 11 moon landing. Supposedly. He envisions using Mars, moons, photo, Phobos and Deimos as preliminary stepping stones for astronauts. He said he dislikes the label one way and imagines tours of duty lasting 10 years. She lovely. The pilgrims on the Mayflower came here to live and stay. They oh. didn't wait around Plymouth Rock for the return trip. And neither will people yeah. building up a population and a settlement on Mars. Well, the, the, the Puritans left England because of persecution. Gee, I wonder why. And then persecuted here. Bingo! This guy, is he, is he the, uh, the, the moon, uh, is he the astronaut that uh, also ran as a Republican at one time, or was that no. the other guy? That no, was, that uh, guy was, uh, what, he became oh, uh, something in Sen Ohio. He became a senator. Glenn. John Glenn. John Glenn. John Glenn. Yeah. Aldrin recently settled in nearby Satellite Beach, right on the Atlantic Ocean after moving from California. He said he considers it a terminal assignment, using Air Force jargon. Oh gosh. I think they should... Too bad he's passed on, but I think uh, Major Anthony Nelson and Roger Healy could have been part of this. You know, well he's still alive, Roger Healy, I mean the guy... Speaking of living and dead... I forgot his name. Uh, what? The black guy with the the great voice, James Earl Jones. He's no, uh, he died. Eighty four. He died. He died. Holy shit! Uh huh. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He was he was a fantastic voice, a mm -hmm. fantastic actor. Moment of silence for for actor James Earl Jones. Okay, that is a shame. I didn't know this. I'm sure I will see it online tonight. Yeah, well, I saw it last night online. I didn't see it. It's a shame. Uh, did James Garner pass away? Not yet. He's still with us, James yeah, Garner? James Garner's still yeah, He's a great progressive. You, may, you see that banner of what he said about Ronald Reagan, that they had a, they had to tell him what to say when he was... Uh, no kidding! Screen Actors Guild We, we saw it on tape. That he's he was on tape. Uh, he's, uh, Regan, I think it's he, Regan. He, said, he says he's not wasn't even fit to be governor of California. Well, I don't know if he had the Alzheimer's then, but you know, when he was uh, when he was uh, president, he had it. But what Gardner says when he was running the Screen Actors Guild, it's possible. he wasn't it's the possible. sharpest nail in the in the, in, the, in, the, in the toolbox. But uh, one time there there's it's on tape. Uh, he was giving a speech, and Regan leaned over to him and said, hurry it up, hurry it up. Of course he took orders. He didn't know what the hell he was doing. He said, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I, I didn't sell uh, missiles to uh, Iran, but, but, but they tell me I did, so 
Uh, I guess I did. Remember when Sarah Palin's uh, script went haywire? Yeah, the teleprompter. And she started rambling like an idiot. But she, well, like she normally does, but, you know. Anyway, um, it is time for... I'm starving. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. <laughs> and we will now be joined by the Bible verses of um, how to defeat a conservative. Simply pause, read, and learn. Uh, followed by our voiceover artist, William Hamilton Morrow III, for promo and commercial. Uh -huh. And we'll, we'll be back for the balance of the show. Uh -huh. The balance of the show. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay, thank you very much. William H. Morrow the third. We're doing promo, as always. Okay, now for we get back to our readings for the balance of uh, this uh, end of August show. End of August 2015. Capitalism in a conch shell. Don't forget, capitalism in a conch shell. Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. Federation of America defended its practices on Thursday in a letter to congressional leaders and included a report by experts it hired who found the undercover videos of officials discussing fetal tissue for research were heavily altered by the anti-abortion activists. The report supports the organization's claims that the secretly recorded videos were distorted to misrepresent conversations employees had with anti-abortion activists posing as biomedical company employees interested in buying fetal tissue. See how sneaky and obsessive the, these right-wing religious nuts are? How sneaky they are? Well, it's the altering that is the problem. They alter it to 
make it seem like that's what they were doing. Instead of doing the good thing of giving the child and the girl an abortion, or doing the things that Planned Parenthood does, it was all about abortion. And these religious nuts are still posting banners online insisting that this little tiny embryo or fertilized egg is a baby. They're still doing this. Something well, that's because they have come up with the life begins at conception thing. That's but, all that is. But, uh, the, it's a man-made up it's thing. It's not biblical. But it's not reality. We don't have to go to the Bible. No, it's not reality. It's not reality. Or scientific, no. if that's what you want to say. Okay, it's just like those uh, those religious nuts that take up serpents in church, mm. and it's all based on a misplaced faith. Evangelical uh, holy rollers, because that faith doesn't work. The letter and the report were the most detailed defense to date by Planned Parenthood, which has come under fire from conservatives since the California-based Center for Medical Progress began releasing a series of undercover videos last month. It's increasingly clear that this attack on Planned Parenthood is a fraud based on a web of lies and deception. Four congressional committees are investigating Planned Parenthood's practices, and lawmakers unsuccessfully try to strip the organization of federal funding. Some conservatives are vowing to vote down must-pass legislation to fund the federal government this fall unless it strips money for the organization, raising the specter of a government shutdown over the issue. The Food and Drug Administration approved the first prescription drug designed to boost sexual desire in women. A milestone long sought by a pharmaceutical industry eager to replicate the blockbuster success of impotence drugs for men. Hmm. But stringent safety measures on the daily pill called ADV, ADYE, ADDYI mean it will probably never achieve the sales of Viagra, mm -hmm. which has generated billions of dollars since the late 1990s. The drug's label will bear a boxed warning, the most serious type, alerting doctors and patients that combining the pill with alcohol can cause dangerously low blood pressure and fainting. That same risk can occur when taking the drug with other commonly prescribed medications, including antifungals used to treat yeast infections. This is not a drug you take an hour before you have sex. You have to take it for weeks and months in order to see any benefit. Hey, you take red ginseng extract and it kicks in in a few days and it's natural and safe. I can imagine how many side effects come with this. Under a safety plan imposed by the FDA, doctors 
will only be able to prescribe Aggie after completing an online certification test demonstrating that they understand its side effects. Pharmacies will also have to be certified. <coughs> Patients and prescribers should fully understand the risks associated with the use of Aggie before considering treatment. Sprout Pharmaceuticals drug is intended to treat women who report emotional stress due to lack of libido. Its approval marks a turnaround for the FDA, which previously rejected the drug twice due to lackluster effectiveness and side effects. There you go. The decision represents a compromise of sorts between the two camps that have publicity, publicly, excuse me, feuded over the drug for years. On one side, Sprout and its supporters have argued that women desperately need FDA-approved medicines to treat sexual problems. Opponents of the drug say it's not worth the side effects, which include nausea, drowsiness, dizziness, and fainting that can lead to serious injuries. They point out that the FDA rejected the drug twice in 2010 and 2013. That doesn't mean just because the FDA approves of a drug, that doesn't make it safe, uh, guaranteed either. Women are grasping, and I feel like we need to offer them something that acknowledges that, and that we can feel safe and comfortable with. Dr. Inglacius, said she has occasionally resorted to prescribing testosterone creams to boost women's libido, a use not approved by the FDA. The search for a pill to treat women's sexual difficulties has been something of a holy grail for the pharmaceutical in industry. It was pursued and later abandoned by Pfizer, Bayer, and Procter and Gamble. But drugs that act on blood flow, hormones, and other biological functions all proved ineffective. Hmm. Adye, known generically as flibansirin, flibansirin, is the first drug that acts on brain chemicals that affect mood and appetite. Gee, whatever happened to the basic nutritional program? The drug's launch is scheduled for mid-October. Women with insurance can expect to pay between $30 and $75 per month for Aggie. Okay, now, speaking of pharmaceuticals. Remember the, uh, the older couple that um, bought the new Acura with no spare tire? Yeah. And no donut? Well, they, um, anyway, they went to an auto uh, store and they bought a, um, a full-sized spare tire, not a donut, because it happens to fit right in the well in the trunk. The hell with the donut. They just bought like a cheap good tire with rim so anyway but that's not what I'm getting at the man the the, the man of, of the of the couple that got screwed by the auto dealer uh, for that reason you know the auto de dealer wanted four hundred dollars for a donut otherwise you got no spare you have to pay for towing blah 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 he has low platelets and he has to take this very expensive drug to build up his platelets, his blood, his 
white blood cell count is a little high too. The, he pays fifty dollars a month, but guess what? The drug, co the um, the pharmacy, the pharmaceutical uh, industry is charging his uh, insurance eight thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars per month for this drug that cost fifty dollars. That. That, no, he's no his cost. Oh, that's his cost. His cost is fifty bucks, but they're getting eight grand a month for this platelet generating drug, and and I can imagine how much it costs Big Pharma to make this, which shows you how low down sleazy crooks her Big Pharma is, and how they're getting away with it. Eight thousand dollars a month. Incredible. <clears throat> I just wanted. To I would say deregulation. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to add that, being that you were talking about a, a pharmaceutical. An unforeseen flood <clears throat> of revenue is shrinking the federal deficits to the lowest level of President Obama's tenure. The, what I've seen, the figure lately, is that the $1.4 trillion deficit left to Mr. Obama by G. W. Bush yeah. has been whittled down to 400 and some billion dollars. Quite an achievement. Yes. Plus, the people that are grateful for Obamacare you know, I mean, it's not, it's a, it's a compromise, it's not what we should have, but... It's not perfect. No, 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 but it's, it's a lot more than what the poor had before, just with a, just by having a Medicaid card, a lot better. Congress's nonpartisan budget advisor said on Tuesday, but in a report that will fuel both parties in their autumn clash over spending, the analysts also warned that perilously high shortfalls will roar back unless the lawmakers act. Clash over spending. I wonder if the Republicans are going to talk about the waste in the military spending. No, 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 no. no. Or, 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 or corporate welfare no, and subsidies. No, 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 no. Oh, no, it's going to no, be no, no. the help that the poor get is what they're going to be bitching the 1 and moaning about. 1% of the about. budget, yes, they're going to go after that. 1% of the budget. It's all the fault of the poor. Yeah. The la 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 lazy moochers poor. And our, and our U.S. media never calls them out when they open their trap. Never. Two weeks before Congress returns from recess. Oh. The Congressional Budget Office said it expects this year's federal deficit to fall to $426 billion. That's $60 billion less than it expected in March. Thanks to greater than expected individual and corporate income tax collections and less than a third of the record $1.4 trillion gap of 2009 as the government tried fighting off the Great Recession. Hey, you know what I, um, yeah, I noticed yesterday for the first time? CNN was broadcasting uh, Bernie Sanders' speech. Well, isn't that, isn't that like it's amazing. Amazing? Yes, it is. Not MSNBC, I mind know, you. I know. CNN yeah. was acknowledging the existence of Bernie Sanders. You know what? They're scumbag uh, uh, corporatists, corporate whores, but I got to give them credit for doing that. You know? I mean, acknowledging Bernie Sanders even exists in this campaign for 2016. 
annual deficits should fall to four point no it's not point excuse me four hundred and fourteen billion dollars next year before an aging population and swelling health care costs ignite shortfalls that should sail past one trillion dollars in 2025. A good health care system like the one Bernie Sanders wants, single payer universal health care, will be more important in, in the near future than ever before because our population is getting older cons uh, considering the fact that couples are having smaller families they're choosing career over children and families will be are, are, are much smaller than they, than they were in the past you know one or two kids uh, sometimes they choose not to have any and uh, that makes and the older population is living longer because of uh, uh, nutritional knowledge. There, uh, hey, when I worked, when I used to work many years ago as a little sapling uh, in the vitamin shop, at that time we got constant flow of senior citizens entering the store, and they bought a lot of supplements. I mean, their basket was full. Mm -hmm. So. You know, they're, they're, a lot of seniors are exercising regularly, they're eating healthy, and they're taking supplements where before they listened to their medical doctor and they, you're lucky if they took a, 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 a Centrum, silver, one a day, they were lucky they did that. But now they, you know, so a good health insurance is important as your population gets older and older. That would push the government's accumulated debt that year to $21 trillion, or 77% the size of the country's economy. Threatening higher interest rates, surging government debt costs, and other problems. All right. You know, I think I'll make for uh, my Sunday breakfast or Sunday brunch. I think I'll make uh, my patented uh, homemade whole grain pancake batter I, uh, from uh, by grinding oats. I think I will add uh, the hemp protein that I got recently from Bob's Red Mill, and I will add uh, chia seed. And I will grind them all into a flour. Of course, I would add Himalayan pink salt, cinnamon. Uh, now with the chia or flax, you don't need eggs. But, you know, I could add it. It doesn't matter to me. But anyway, I digress. Governor Christie would have been a great punchline for Johnny Carson and Jay Leno. Oh, forget it. With uh, their frequent negative comments on and jokes about New Jersey. Right. Well, uh, David Letterman uh, had a field day with Christie every week. Christie is constantly mouthing about being a Jersey guy. Oh, he's a Jersey guy, all right. And so are the idiots that re-elected him or indicating that he is tough because he comes from New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, from New Jersey, yeah, from New Jersey, I'm tough, you know what I'm saying? Hey, all right, you over there, sit down, sit down and shut yeah, up shut while I'm out. talking. Yeah. This is a town hall meeting, but, you know, you, nobody can give their opinion uh, during a town hall meeting. You gotta listen to the big dictator over here. Sit down and shut up. The picture of the Garden State that this buffoon presents to the rest of the country is the antithesis of what we are. Yeah, right. On frequent trips around the country and abroad, I've run into any number of people who view him and New Jersey 
as a state populated by people ready to punch out anyone who disagrees with the prestige. The picture of violence that he constantly presents is not at all the New Jersey and the people who live here that I know. His frequent threat of, I'm a Jersey guy! Could you imagine if somebody really told him what he really was? I mean, for real? How he would react? <laughs> Indicating he should not be attacked or questioned. Ugh. Is a slap in the face to every New Jersey, Democrat or Republican. What about squandering taxpayers' money on personal things? He is not representative of us. And heaven forbid, should he end up as president, we'd probably be in a war within a month of his mouth taking office. Oh my God, could you imagine Donald Trump and Chris Christie <laughs> as, as running mates, as, as a, you know, President and VP uh, uh, as a team. You imagine how how hated the United States would be then. It's hated now as it is. Yes, it is. The two biggest mouths in 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 that ever existed in politics. A little change of pace. Tomato paste. Pace. Oh, pace. Pachi. Pachi. Made a pace. The <laughs> wedding night. Who got married? I had dreamed about forever was supposed to be the most romantic and amazing of my life with the one person I can't live without. Is this about somebody Shalali? Instead, it was the most humiliating experience I have ever had. So it turned out she was a bitch, huh? You married a bitch, a biatcha. I dressed in a beautiful negligee. Oh, this is the woman who's talking. Oh. Uh, and my husband didn't even take a second look at me. Was she, is she 400 pounds? I was so embarrassed. I rolled over and pretended to fall asleep. He must have seen her in her birthday suit before the wedding day. I hope so. That was my big night. The one night I'll never get again. Maybe she was like Bridezilla. Remember that show? You never know. The same man brags about sexual encounters he had with his ex-wife. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. You don't do that. You don't talk about your exes. Cyber sex. When you were the present woman. And his 13-hour sexathon. He's full of shit. He's full of, he's full of, he's full of fecal matter. 13 yes. hours. Get the hell out of here. When I try to touch him, he seems repulsed and pulls away. My heart can't take the never-ending rejection and the nights of crying. <laughs> Because I don't know what I have done wrong. <laughs> Sounds like this guy is a real life Glenn Quagmire, you know, from Family Guy. He's a sex addict on, uh, on the cartoon. He wears the same red and white Hawaiian shirt on every episode. Matter of fact, his wardrobe was all red and white Hawaiian shirts. The sad thing is, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he has never even noticed. He's full of shit about that whole, uh... Even an intimate kiss his, would be enough for me. His history, yeah, something, you know... Now, I dream of a man who loves me. I don't feel sorry for So him. much that he stares at me from across the room who can't wait to get his hands on me! You mean to tell even me... Even if it's just for a second. You mean to tell me this woman did not see any red flags prior to the wedding day, that she knew 
she saw nothing wrong with this man until after she married him? Bullshit. Unfortunately, that's not my marriage. Don't I deserve happiness? I deserve a, a, a straitjacket. And will this ever change? She's hiding something, no. Dear Abby's answer. Of course you deserve happiness. How do you how does she know she deserves it? But nothing will change until you start asking questions and demanding answers. The only thing you have done wrong is to have tolerated the status quo. But but things don't it's like when when, when I was talking about the auto mechanic, things don't go from good to worse that quickly, you know, like uh, overnight. Well, I mean, you won't find out if you don't ask questions. She's crying about how horrible this man is during their wedding. And but what happened when they were dating when, and engaged before the wedding night? We don't know. Continue. Has it occurred to you, <coughs> excuse me, that your husband has been lying to you about his sexual exploits. What did I say? He may be impotent. Yay! Yeah, he's full of shit, man. You know how many guys tell fish stories out there? Or so hooked on cyberborn yes, his that there is nothing left for you. His flapjacks are empty. Make it your business to find out. Ask him! <laughs> and if he isn't forthcoming, talk with his ex-wife. Oh, gosh. If your marriage was never consummated, you may be entitled to an annulment. I saw that in a can of Campbell's soup one time. Consummated. Oh, my God! What? That's consummate! Oh, it's different? Quite certainly. <laughs> I think I was better off with the serpent. Give me advice. Oh. oh, gosh. This summer's political madness. Oh, we're doing good on time. Was nicely captured by a confluence of events over the last few days. While global financial markets teetered, the campaign news was dominated by Donald Trump's personal feuds with journalists. That's it? Trump's First. insults directly towards Fox News' Megyn Kelly. Ah, uh, this is fun. And his confrontation with Jorge Ramos, Univision anchor, we're bound to get some attention, especially from journalists inclined to stand up for our colleagues. Why was Jorge Ramos uh, mistreated and, and given the boot? Because he wouldn't shut up. He kept on with the immigrant thingy. He wouldn't shut up? When Trump had answered his question and told him what he was going to do, and etc., he wouldn't shut up, so he, he kept was, coming back. He kept on taunting Donald Trump. Yeah, so then Donald Trump had him thrown out and then brought him back. Oh. When he thought about it, he brought him back. Uh, that was a smart move by yeah. him. But the tale wasn't primarily about journalism. It was just another episode in a TV series, a sign of how brilliantly Trump has succeeded in transforming a battle for the presidency into a reality show starring himself. In the late 1980s, the journalist Martin Schramm wrote a book about presidential politics in the television age called The Great American Video Game. The Trump obsession shows just how prophetic Schramm's title was. Television is about ratings. Mm -hmm. Trump delivers 
ratings. Boy, he he says it with such uh, such uh, uh, enthusiasm. Therefore, Trump, whose speeches are ninety percent about Trump, his feelings, experiences, feuds, grudges, and of course his genius, his genius. is on television nonstop. The Trumpification of the news is also a reaction within the media to the initial reaction of so many in the ranks to Trump. The widespread view was that his personal insults, his nasty remarks about Mexicans, whom he now says he loves, yeah, of course he does, and his conversion of the political speech into a form of self-involved stand up would doom his chances. He needs he needs their votes. Of course he's This was wrong. Because number one, Trump's celebrity built on the idea that a smart deal maker can get anything done that he wants gives him a base among those who don't care much about politics. He sounds like Monty Hall, you know, let's make a deal, let's make a deal, I gotta make a deal, the deal, the deal because his second loved book is his, The Art of the Deal. So he's, he's injecting that. The Bible's number one. Into. And the art of the deal is number two. The Bible's number one with Trump. And the deal is second. <laughs> now, to prove that Trumpy uh, actually loves the Bible, etc. Now, you know what they'll do? They're doing it now. Well, what verses does he know? He was As asked. if that proves something that you know about the Bible. But do you apply it? We know a lot of verses about the Bible. First of all, Republicans, my prediction is they won't be able to give you many verses at all, except for these little short one-liners. Yeah. You know, but I just, I'm saying, the but, verses but are he, not the thing. But if there he, is a red line that goes through the Bible. And yeah. you must understand what God is doing and all of this stuff with the red line. It's like when those, verses. It's like when those, uh, when those jerk-off Republicans say, oh, if you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah. They don't tell you where that came from. They don't tell you why Paul said that. What about thou shalt not steal, which they do all the time? Oh! Thou shalt not uh, bear false witness against thy neighbor. What which about I, the number one lying. commandment? Keep the Sabbath. Sabbath they have holy. the wrong God. Oh, the wrong God. I, Idolatry. I, Idolatry. Money is their God. That's true. Yes. Money is their God. That's their graven image, right? Well, yeah. that's a graven image, but the, yeah. the point is that they have the wrong God. They don't have the God of the Bible, yet they, they carry this book around and try to convince you that they know a couple of verses from it. Mm. But they don't know the red line. You know, even, even um, the artisans who help build and decorate the old old cathedrals, you know, Renaissance period, uh, they, their depiction of, of images of, of, of deities, you know, like angels, uh, people of the Bible, is very inaccurate in their recreation of it, you know, I mean, the angel is always a little putty, little baby with chubby cheeks, curly hair, and, and little tiny wings. Or only two wings. I have never seen an angel depicted with more than two wings. When some of them have six wings. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, like the descriptions in the Bible yeah. were not even accurately portrayed back then when the ancient cathedrals, old cathedrals, were yeah. built. What do you want? All of those churches that were built we're not the true church of God, so what do you expect? Jesus looked uh, uh, Northern European. You know? Mary looked Northern European. None of, none of them had brown skin. In order. Oh. None, of, none of them looked like the indigenous people of the, of the Middle East. 
they all looked European. Um, and of course, number two. Number two. Parts of the Republican Party are so fed up with their leadership that the more in your face Trump is, the happier they are. The most concise explanation for the Trump phenomenon came from Eric Erickson, editor of the popular right-wing blog Red State, in an interview earlier this month with the Atlantic's Molly Ball. The Republican Party created Donald Trump, Erickson said, because they made a lot of promises to their base and never kept them. Well, this happens all the time with Republicans, ain't it? They never keep promises to the, 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 the have-nots, the middle class, Yeah, because once they're, once they're elected and re-elected, that just like when once a baby is born, you're invisible. They can care less. They only care if you're if you're in the womb. They only do the bidding of the corporations and the oligarchs. But how long does it take their people to understand this and stop voting for them? Yeah, common sense, something that clicks in your head. You know, mainstream. I don't understand them. Uh, I mean, I mean, I don't understand how a multi-billionaire can never have enough money, number one. Uh. And number two, I can never understand why somebody who's struggling and suffering day by day, week by week, would vote for somebody that doesn't do a damn thing for them. <coughs> Those are the two things that are puzzling me. Very puzzling. No logic whatsoever. Republican leaders care primarily about a low-tax, pro-business agenda, but they have kept their most conservative supporters at a very high level of energy, angry mobilization, exploiting anxieties about demographic and social change. They kept pledging they would really and truly repeal Obamacare even when they knew they didn't have the votes. Trump is the revenge of the party's non-insiders who are tired of being used. But there's a major problem with all the Trump coverage. It's based on the assumption that he is leading a formidable mass movement when his following is nothing of the sort. The Trump partisans are a very small minority of Americans. Due to math, the polls show that Trump is supported by about 25 percent of Republicans and Republican-leaning independents, who together account for somewhere between 40% and 45% of the country. People that, I will take a wild guess and say people that love Donald Trump are white and and those that love to blame everything on the people of color, whether they be Latino or black or if they're if immigrants, you know, they, they, they scapegoat people that are not white and uh, and of course there are people that just look at the fact that Trump is entertaining them just like he's entertaining the media so generously the Trump insurrection is built on the backing of all about 11 percent of Americans it'd be so outrageous that's why you're getting Trump to death here the limits of Trumpism are further understood, excuse me, underscored in one of the best deep dives into polling on Trump by Henry Olson. Trumpism. When asked, <coughs> excuse me, if there is a candidate they would never vote for, Republicans are more likely to name Trump 
than any of his major foes. Trump's favorability ratings are especially negative among moderates. Trump has certainly gotten further faster than any of his Republican opponents, but all the free television time he is getting cannot be justified by a claim that he is sitting atop some broad uprising akin to the Goldwater or Reagan rebellions. His visibility is the product of circular television logic. Celebrities bring audience share. I'm, I, I predict he's going to get his own show on Fox. Fox News is going to offer him a big show. You know. But he already turned down the, the, this year of The Apprentice. I thought he so was, he could run. I thought I thought they gave the apprentice the axe. They approved it this year. He he did not take it. Well, he's going to be he's going to be a bigger star than ever after this election. I mean, Trump, he's already a huge star. Yeah. Trump's unique contribution has been to achieve a complete fusion of the culture of celebrity with politics. It brings to mind the mystery writer David Handler's great line about the power of positive self-delusion. <laughs> Television is a business like any other. But journalism in a democracy is supposed to be more than that. Nowhere is the tension between financial and public imperatives more obvious than in the massive coverage of the Trump spectacular and the parsimonious attention given to anything serious any other candidate might say. But hey, hey, how often? does a serious speech about our economic troubles win ratings for anyone? No. They, if they want ratings, they, they, they're looking for entertainment, and Trump is their man. You know, do the uh, bombast, man. You do the bombast. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, uh, it's, um, I know what's going to happen. Once the debates roll around, they're, they're going to demonize Bernie Sanders for being affiliated with socialism. Well, of course. They're going to they're, they're going to they're going to demonize socialism, and they're going to make capitalism look like you know, and like it's godly. The best economic system of all time. And they're going to they're going to talk about the same bullshit: the job creators versus the job killers. Same crap all uh, that they've been all Republicans spew. All right, we got one more to go for the road. I got a Christie and I got a Trumper. Eh, keep it a Trump. Keep it Trump because I got a real funny front cover for this uh, show. Uh, now give us give us feedback, people. If if it bothers you that this show comes to you in one entire video or do you really really prefer it in parts give us some feedback on this and we, we want to hear what you have to say but right. make sure the feedback comes from people who watch the damn show you're not people who just give their opinion for the sake of giving their opinion sticking their two cents in <laughs> just like I don't want to hear people people's political opinion if they don't vote I sit back and watch how the media is completely awestruck by Donald Trump and his undiplomatic and ruthless rhetoric. The coverage given to Trump is unreal and it shows the media has succumbed to lowering its standards and adopting reality show phenomena to politics. The facts are, Trump has no concrete policy on foreign affairs. No specific outline on a better health care plan. And no evidence 
for his comments about the Mexican government sending criminals over the border, or pregnant women giving birth in the United States to gain citizenship for their children. Yet his poll numbers continue to grow. The issue that most interests me is not what Donald Trump is saying, but who the people are who are supporting that type of mentality and behavior, and why. We are all entitled to our beliefs. However, when a political leader opens the gates of prejudice, hatred, division, also being opened are the gates to hell, hostility and aggression among Americans. Republicans can do better. We are all God's lovely creatures. We can all coexist by respecting and leaning and learning from each other. Even if Republicans do better, they, they're still demons in my book. Well, if you can't show one damn thing that they've ever done for you since Dwight D. Eisenhower. Can't show it. Then what do you got? You got, you got the center of a, of a donut. <laughs> How long is the Christie one? Not long. All right. The headline was disheartening to me because Governor Christie is totally uninterested in improving education. Only in his agenda of attacking public unions, teachers unions, most prominently in his desperate effort to become relevant in the Republican presidential campaign. Hey, when Chris Christie first became an attorney, didn't he want to get paid top dollar for his profession? I'm sure he did from almost six years ago when he said that teachers had their hands in the taxpayers' pocket? Ah, ha, 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 ha. Ah, ha. And, 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 and conservative politicians don't. Give me a break. To his recent line that the teachers' union deserves a punch in the face. What hypocrites they are. Holy shit. Christie has simply championed the right-wing agenda of attacking public schools in an effort to destroy teacher unions so that charter schools can flourish. And car charter schools are what? Privatized. Privatized! So only rich kids will get a good education, and your kids will be dumbed down and work as slaves. Hands in the taxpayers' pot? Pocket. Pocket? They are, Republicans are experts at having their hands in the taxpayer's pocket and giving it to the rich. Oh Siphon my God. Siphon up, baby. What nerve, and did anybody call him out for saying something so preposterous? Nobody's got the balls. Don't you hear my head swinging now? That's incredible. <laughs> Not even, what about the Democrats? In Trenton, the, uh, uh, the, the the state senate, nobody cut, nobody came out and and hollered about him hypocritically making an, an asinine statement like that. This is the man who walked away from four hundred million dollars under the federal race to the top program, rather than accept. A compromise negotiated by Brett Schundler. I remember that. His then education commissioner. In true Christie fashion, he blamed Schundler for losing the money and he fired him. You're fired. Yeah, he, 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 he made him take the heat. Christie's most recent attacks have come in the same week when state schools have once again received national recognition for excellence. This is the same man who lied about his real reasons 
for cutting money for women's health. Real reasons? Who destroyed the proposed art tunnel and who accepts lavish gifts from friends while attacking the wages and benefits of public workers. The state legislature should remove him from office. And why would anybody want to be, uh, why would any, anyone want to uh, acquire a profession as a state or federal employee if they're not going to be sufficiently paid for their services. I'm sure politicians... Well, that's one way of getting rid of them, isn't it? Politicians, <coughs> politicians like Chris Christie, you know, and his ilk, and lawyers and everything, they... It's important for them to be very well paid. And, and take gifts from cronies, from their rich crony friends. But heaven forbid someone else should want to enjoy life and, and reap the rewards of the American dream. Well, I may be putting together my new, new article. I don't know yet for sure, but question that has been bugging me for the longest time. How did we ever get to this place where we give the corporations and the oligarchs all this power and etc. And we think of ourselves as little peons that must come begging to them for jobs to survive in their world. How did we get to this place? Groveling to them. See, they created their world on purpose. They want you to be a desperate poor sap. Robin, but the only way they could have done that, because they don't have the numbers, was to make us not pay attention to what was going on. Because they bought the politicians, they bought the media, they have arranged for everyone to be brainwashed, even your kids in school with the textbooks. It is all... But they had to have some way of keeping the information from us and keeping us from the voting booths to get their their yeah. agendas. Well, it, you know, uh, you know that the average American has to get the real, true news and information from the, from the internet. You're not going to get any of it from the uh, media locally or or major networks because when I can't watch major network uh, or local news any longer because I look at it and they're talking about the most trivial stupid things that are not important I mean really dumb things well they never see, mention anything sometimes on a deep or high some level some people put up a video on Facebook and you'll see it every news organizations different television stations and etc they all get the same goddamn talking point and they all say the same friggin' thing. And I'm so sick of big deal. You gave a thumbs up to an article or you clicked like to a banner. But do you vote at every major election? Do you vote? Do you really? I don't think so. Because, you know why? Because before this past November the 4th, 2014, I constantly put hard-hitting truth information on in the groups day and night, <coughs> night and day. I posted, and I posted, and I posted, and I got kudos, and I got thumbs up, and I got likes, and I got comment comments here and there. But guess what? Most Americans... Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Most Americans... No, no, no. I'm talking about spreading the message. Yeah, I not, know. Not, not egos in vain. Van vanity. I'm talking about spreading the message. But did most Americans vote November the 4th, 2014? No, they didn't vote. So what good is all the thumbs up and clicking like and saying, you know, 
Right on, James. Great, great post, great post. If, if all these people go online and they're all gung-ho, enthusiastic progressives, then why did such a small percentage of America vote this past November the 4th? Why? Don't, well, blow, don't blow sunshine up my ass on the internet and then when it comes down to it, you lazy fuck sit on your fat ass and you don't go to the polls and, and do your duty as an American citizen duty. and vote. I know one little part of the puzzle is that the voting day should be a holiday, number one. So no one has an excuse. Correct. So you go at night. Voting should be the easiest of things to do. Worst case scenario, if you have to work that day, you get out of work and you go straight for the pole. Oh no, they go straight to the tavern. How long does, you know how long it took me to vote? Usually, the place you gotta go to vote, except for people that live in rural America, because they're screwed sometimes. Yeah. You know, the districts and all that crap. Jesse Ventura mentioned that. But me, myself, personally, I leave the house, and five minutes I'm there. There's a, a, a grammar school where I am, where I'm supposed to vote. I go to a, a grammar school, and it takes me like the most. Five minutes. The, no, 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 the most. You have to pull the thing down. I uh, bullshit the with the old whatever. ladies. And, uh, you know, hey, oh, how you well. doing? Rur, rur, rur. You know, I'm off well, there. you'll be there all day. <laughs> 10, 15 Jeez. minutes and I'm out of there. From the time I walk out of the house, 10 to 15 minutes and I'm practically back home again. Give me a break. Boom. It's over with. Now you voted. Now you can bitch and moan and complain and, and give your opinion opinions all you want on, on the internet because you voted you voted multiply that times millions tens now, of millions now what's gonna happen is if mainstream America thinks like that guess what the Republicans won't win the elections the Democrats will have control of the House of Representatives the Senate They'll have a Democrat in the White House, or I like to say a, a progressive, because I don't like the two-party system, in the White House, and they will appoint progressive Supreme Court justices when they can, and you will have the rich paying their fair share in taxes. You will get some sort of reform, yes. Reform, reform, yes, reform, yes, reform, yes, reform, yes. reform. Yes. Single payer universal health care. Well, I don't doubt. I doubt that that is ever going to come around, ever. Well, people have to stand up to the insurance companies and say fuck ah. and say fuck you. And therein lies the problem. You know what? As long as money is involved, those things are pipe dream. Well, I guess then the Scandinavian countries will continue to do things right. Yes, they will. And we will. And we will still call them socialists. And we. Okay. Uh, 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 so what? So what's wrong with socialism? I would say to them. Uh, nothing. That's why whenever somebody does say that, yeah, you say to them, um, uh, what do you mean by socialist? Yeah, explain to me. Yeah. And what did capitalism ever do for the poor and middle class since I, uh, uh, Dwight Eisenhower? Well, name me one thing. Obviously, obviously. They're going to say freedom. No, they're going to say socialism is totalitarianism. No, it's not. And then you will have to correct them. You see, I think fascism is more totalitarian than. Uh, they both are. Socialism. Totalitarianism in and fascism are totalitarianism. I just said that. You twisted my words again. You say socialism. No, is. I says totalitarianism is 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 a hell of a is is. Is it's almost synonymous, synonymous. It's the same as fascism. It's the same. It, it, corporate fascism oligarchy does not have to be stormtroopers dancing around. No, it could just be a corporate oligarchy. It's a marriage between corporations and government. Period. Yeah. Don't have to be 
The uh, what, what did Hitler call his uh, stormtroopers? What do you call them? Uh, the, Whatever. The the SS, the Gestapo, yeah, the, SS, the Gestapo. Gestapo. Well, yeah. What about what about uh, military uh, dictatorships? Aren't they uh, totalitarian? Same. Same. That's why I tell you. A label, you know, could mean many things. The Soviet Union was um, totalitarian. Totalitarian in a military yeah. sort of way. Yeah. Not corporate, but in, in military uh, dictatorship wise. Well, who owned the corporations? The state. The Kremlin. Under socialism, the state owns the corporations. Under fascism, same thing. A means of. Uh, um, you know, it's the same. Under fascism, now you're confusing me. Under fascism, the state owns. The state is married to. Is married they to. They don't have to own. But they, they take. But to. they're taking orders from the corporation. That's correct. All right. But under socialism, we the people own Microsoft. Like Not that, Bill Gates. Like that company that's going up against uh, Walmart, Winco. Is it is it employee co -op. owned? Uh, yes, it's co-op. An employee owned company. Yeah, they have it in Spain. They have it in Spain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's what uh, it's it, it's it's from communism. That's where it comes from. Yeah. Co-ops. Right. Uh, employer employee owned. It comes from communism. Yeah, well, you don't have some uh, blood-sucking, parasitic whore CEO hogging all the prosperity. Well, like that son of a bitch. Here, what, uh, about, what about the the people who complain about raising the minimum wage? But I don't see anybody complain because it's bad for the economy. But I don't see anybody complaining about raising CEO pay being bad for the economy. How come? Yeah, McDonald's bitches and moans about. CEO about, pay is but a but siphoning his, up. His CEO pay doubled and tripled uh, of McDonald's, the CEO. It, it's a siphoning upward. Yeah. The best thing that ever happened in fast food, aside from what McDonald's workers get paid in Northern Europe, they get paid, they get paid over $20 an hour hey. with benefits and all that, because probably the government makes sure they give them a living wage. They're but, socialists. But it, good. But in the United States, now in New York City, all fast food employees must start with fifteen dollars an hour in New start. York City. It's a start. To start, it's a start. It's a start. And hopefully, the the, 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 the snowball going down the, the the avalanche will get bigger. The snowball will get bigger. All right. Hopefully. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Say so long. So long. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.